Hi there, today we're unboxing a video capture device. So this particular one is by Cloner Alliance. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So this device lets you take an input, connect it to the device and record it instantly. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging. So let me quickly run through them one by one. You get a piece of paper with support details. The other side has this on there. Then you get a quick start guide. Opening that up just has some basic details on how to use this and all in English. Next we have two power adapters. One is for the EU. Cable length on this is 135 centimeters and one for the UK and cable length on this one is 80 centimeters. Both adapters give the same output, so five volts, two amps. Build wise, the UK cable seems of better quality, nice and chunky, thinner cable on the EU plug. Next we have a USB to micro USB cable and the length of the cable is 70 centimeters and build quality is reasonable. Next we have a cable with HDMI on one end and a number of different connection points on the other. So you've got VGA here and you've got composite. So good build quality to this and short cable on this one, so just 40 centimeters in length. Next we have a HDMI cable. The length of this is one meter. The connections on this are not gold plated, just to note, but the general build quality feels really good on this. Next we've got a remote control and light feel to that. Buttons feel okay on there and it takes two AAA batteries. Next we have the cloner box, so that's 10.8 centimeters by 10.8 centimeters. Thickness at the thickest point is 1.7 centimeters. And now coming around the top, you obviously got their branding on there. This is more of their branding, it's not a button or anything. And coming around the side here, you've got the infrared point there, source, snapshot, and record and stop. This side, you've got line in, line out, mic, storage. So that doesn't have any storage on the device. You'd plug in external storage to enable you to record on this. It takes FAT32 and NTFS formatted drives. Coming around this way, you can see DC power connection point there, HDMI input, then you've got MMI in, and that's where you use a special cable you've got down there with VGA and composite on there. Then we have output and a connection to PC. So two modes of operation on there. You can plug this directly into a TV to see this. So you could have your gaming console going into there and then the output going to your TV, or you could have the gaming console going into there and the output going to your PC. Now the advantage of having a box like this as opposed to recording directly on your computer, say via screen record, it takes the load off your computer. So whatever you have running will give an extra load on your computer. By having a box like this, you're running at the optimum speed and you're not putting unnecessary strain on there. So that's one reason for getting something like this. The other one is if you had older recordings, for instance, on an old style VHS recorder, you could plug it directly into this and then get it recorded straight into a digital format. Now, it can record up to 1080p on this, so you can convert an existing VHS recording if you had to a 1080p recording. So multiple options available on this. It's just a capture device, nothing else. Takes an input and then records it and gives you an output on there via an external device. Just to show the underneath of the box, so you've got four rubber pads to stop it slipping on a surface and vents all the way around. Let's get this connected so we can test it out. So if I spin it around the back, got the connection points there. First one being the DC input, so I'll plug the power in there. The other end's already plugged in. Then we've got in, and that's where we want the source to come in. And HDMI cable here, the other end's plugged into my Xbox. If I plug that in there, then we don't need to plug this one in. This is if you've got a composite source and then we've got out, on out, and this is where we'd connect our TV. So the other end of this HDMI is connected to my TV. Then we've got two PC. We don't need to plug that in. Next, let me plug in my USB stick. So 64 gig here can be plugged straight in to the USB connection point there. And this has been formatted to NTFS. Coming around the front, it's not on at the moment, so next thing is we can turn it on and test this out.
So let's test out the device. I've got the remote here and just to note, it's infrared. So if I click it without pointing to the device, nothing happens. Got to point it and then it works. So let's give it a moment to start up. So intentionally, I've not turned on my Xbox at the moment. So that way I can just show you through the menu of options available on this. Makes it easier so you don't see anything on the background. You can just focus on the options available. Now, this is what I'm presented with. So no signal, meaning there's no source coming in. So let me click home. So let me point out the device, click home, and that's what we're presented with. So it has a number of menu options. So let's go into the first one, so system time. So you can amend the system time on here. Schedule recording. So if we come in there, you can set a timer for the recording. So once or every day. Coming back, then you've got headset mixing on and off. So this is a situation where you've plugged in a headset and you want that to be mixed in with what's been recorded. So that's quite a good functionality. Bit rate set, so you can change the bit rate on there. You can see the options available. Coming back, time info off, record info off. Firmware update USB, so you can update via a USB. Coming down and that's it. So go across, so you can see picture mode standard. So it's standard at the moment, then you've got mild, user, dynamic and standard. Coming back, then you've got color temperature, currently it's medium. You can go for the defaults that are there and you can adjust it on user. Back from there, aspect ratio, four by three, 16 by nine, zoom in once, twice and just scan. And then if I go across, sound mode, standard. Going across, you've got music, movie, sports, user, back to standard. Let's come out of that one. Then you've got equalizer. You can adjust different settings there. Going across, OSD language, English. So you can adjust that. Restore factory default. OSD transparency low. Change that to low. OSD duration, 15 seconds. Turn that off. And then firmware version. Clicking sideways, you're back to the original menu. So there you go. That's all the menu options you have available with the system. Them. very straightforward to navigate around enough functionality to adjust things set timers which are quite interesting you can do that and even overlay your own voice onto this so if you had an input being recorded for instance a PlayStation or an Xbox you could plug in a separate mic and record the sound directly as well so it'll mix it onto the recording it makes next let's turn on our Xbox so if I hold on to the power there and it says no signal at the moment. And if we give it a moment, it should pick up the Xbox input. There you go. Working straight away, as you can see. And let me start it up, start a game up in the background, and I can show you how to do recording on this. So now at the stage, Xbox has initialized, I've started a game up, and it's just at the point on Fortnite where it says press the start. So I'll leave it there for a moment. Let me quickly go through the options on the remote. So you've got source selection there. At the moment, it's HDMI, but you can select the others. If I click VGA, we don't have a VGA source coming in. That's why you're seeing that. And let's go back to HDMI. You've got the composite there and you've got AV over here. For these three, it will be a combination of the different options on the other cable I already showed. Now looking here, you've got a mute button see on the screen it's muted I click it again it's unmuted it then you've got aspect ratio so that's 4 by 3 and that's 16 by 9 you've got a mute for the microphone and then the record and stop over here so it is actually as simple as that to initiate record so if I click it now it's recording now as that started to record I'll just click press to start so that's starting up and I can click stop to stop the recording. I'll press it now and you'll see on the screen, stop recording. So it's turning off now. So now if I go for the options here, so if I click up, it's microphone control and down, microphone control, volume at the sides and okay as a selection on there. You can see there on the screen, it's at 720p, 60 Hertz. Now looking towards the bottom right there, you can see the three options available. So 720p, 1080p, and PC. So if I now click on 1080p, 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz. Now looking along here, you've got time. You can change that. 
you've got playback so if you've recorded anything you can play it back via here so if I now come back go to film you can see some of the recordings I've already done I'll click on that and there you go that's the recording of Fortnite that I did coming back from there go to schedule so you can set your timer there and then navigation and delete options. So very simple to navigate on this and easy to make changes as well. And nice that once you've connected it, you just literally hit record and that's it, you're recording. A Couple of things I wanted to mention about the device. So once you've got the power plugged in and it's on, the light comes on here. Blue indicator indicating that it's on. Now, if you look up here on the front, you can see record and stop. So if I initiate a record by clicking the button, you can see the light starts flashing away. So this is a visual indication that a recording's in progress. So, for instance, if you are wondering if it's still recording or have I pressed the record button, if you've turned off OSD on the device, so on-screen display, and you weren't sure where it's happening, this is your indicator. At least you know the recording's in progress. Now, once you've finished recording, you just stop it either remote or by pressing the button here, and you can see it stopped flashing and now it's alternating between green and blue and what that means is it's writing the data to the storage that's connected on there so at least you know that once it's stopped flashing green the data has been successfully written to the storage that's connected to the device so a good visual indication there so then you know it's safe to then pull out the power or just turn it off via the remote Okay, so I've got Fortnite running on my Xbox now. Let me initiate a record. So if I hit the record button on the remote, you can see just faintly in the corner, it says recording now. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're gonna be recording large amounts of footage, it's worth formatting the drive to FAT32 because the file sizes become very large and you may run into issues. So I've read some reviews regarding the product, they recommend having the drive formatted to FAT32. So keep that in mind. So I'll have a short play of this and I'll put the footage in just after I talk so you can get an idea the quality to expect out of this. But it's just pulling the data straight off HDMI so I don't see any issues with this. So let's have a quick game. So now I've started up Fortnite, I've hit record on the unit and I've actually got a microphone connected onto the cloner box. Now what you're seeing is a recording on the cloner box and the voice you're hearing, my voice, is the microphone plugged in and that voice being picked up by it. So excellent functionality here, the fact you can record yourself over what's being inputted. So now. I can also control the volume levels of what's being recorded. So if I turn it up, you can hear sounds from Fortnite and I'll put it on maximum. There you go. So you can talk along, you can lower the volume if you wanted to. So excellent functionality here, the fact you can do that. So you can get other recordings, even your own home recording. If you have an older VHS recording and you wanted to do a voiceover on that, that's possible. All you need to do is obviously buy a microphone for this. So I'm impressed. Good functionality from this. Next, let me show the software that's used with the device. So this is only obtained from their website. You've got to register the device. So underneath it, there is a serial number. You provide that serial number, then you get details on downloading. And then once you've downloaded and installed, these are the two products you get. So MP4 cloner. So if I start that up, it's got a trim option, so obviously recordings you've made, you can trim them, you can combine multiples together, you can convert them, and you can burn them onto a DVD. Straightforward, simple software there, and this is the interesting one now. So HDML Cloner Pro Helper, so if I start that up. Now, the cloner box, what I've done, I've plugged that into the PC, and the input source, I've actually plugged in my Chromecast. You can plug in any device. So 
any HDMI device or even VGA or composite device. Now, let me show you the options available on this. Coming over here, you've got live stream. I've not got any settings in there. So that's why you see, please fill live stream server address and key. Next, we've got an option to show the recordings and images you've taken on there. So just coming on there just to show, if I right click, you've got a view option. And same applies for the video. If I right click, there's a play option on there. And if I come back from there, next we have a broadcast share. Again, start server coming out from there. And this is full screen. So you can see exactly what's coming through on there. Then you've got your record option, it says there, format it's recording in, so 1080p, and the fact it's recording stop button next then you've got the snapshot button so you can take a snapshot you can create gifs as well so if i click there you can see counter going so it's creating a gif and once you've done just click that and it stops then if i click here you've got setup so you've got video resolution they're the ones available video bitrate video render aspect rate language and then capture, so you can get a hotkey for recording as well, and that's the formats you've got available. Folder to save the items in, come into picture, then you've got format, you can change the format as well, hotkey for that. VBS, so video broadcast share, which your details in there. Live stream, so details for your live stream, and that's it. Now coming over here, you've got a volume control, so you can reduce the volume, increase the volume. And that's it. It's a very useful functionality you get with the Cloda Box. The fact you can connect it to a PC, even initiate live streams on there, do captures, create GIFs, record video. So excellent bit of functionality. Now, as I've got my Chromecast connected, let me cast a video to it. So I'm just doing that from my mobile. You can see there. There you go, it's playing. Let me hit record. And now I can adjust the volume on there as well. So if I were to take the volume up or down, that's possible. And I can actually reduce it down to avoid any sound getting recorded as well. And now you can see in the corner, counter ticking away, showing it's recording. Let me hit stop on that. And if I come back to the folder there, click on video, you can see the recordings that have been made that were put out there just suggesting that I missed a few things out not intentional just one of the first simulator co there you go as simple as that excellent bit of functionality in fact you can run it directly without a PC and the fact you can run it on a PC as well. I think it's a really useful product to have. Obviously, no matter what you're doing on your PC, even if it says it's no load on there, it's going to be some load. So even if it's recording, it's still processing. There's be a thread running in the background, obviously doing the record on there. So very useful product to have here. And the fact it's multifunctional. So you're not limited to just the PC. You can run it directly. Other sources can be connected as well. Obviously, I've demonstrated just via HDMI, but you've got composite and VGA as well. Aspect ratios can be changed as well. Resolution can be adjusted as well. So excellent functionality. There you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.